remember. I don't know his plans. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, about the chess masters of past century, who do you think is the is the greatest? Apart from yourself, of course. I don't know about your own estimate of yourself, but of the others. Well. Chess, chess, you know, uh, so much depends on opening theory. Mm -hmm. So the champions of, say, the last century, mm -hmm. I mean, not the last, the century before last, uh, yeah. in the last century, they didn't know nearly as much as, say, I do and other players know about opening theory. Yeah. So if you just brought them back, you know, from the dead and they played Cup of Blanc, old, Cup of they wouldn't do well because they'd get bad openings. Mm -hmm. Or they might not do too well. But of course, if they learned the openings, which they would very quickly, then they would. So you cannot. My point is, you cannot compare the playing strength. You can only talk about natural ability more. You cannot because mm -hmm. now there's so much more opening theory, so much more memorization. Yeah. The memorization is enormously powerful. Mm -hmm. So I mean, some kid of 14 today, or even younger could get the opening advantage against Capablanca or especially against the players of the previous century from the 1900s, century, like, yeah. you know, like Morphy and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, Steinitz and so on. You definitely get the opening advantage easily. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe they'd still be able to outplay the young kid of today, but maybe not because mm -hmm. Now it is when you get the opening advantage, not only do you get the opening advantage, but you know how to play the opening advantage. Mm -hmm. They have so many examples of what to do yeah. from this position. Mm -hmm. and the so it's really unknown. deadly. It's very mm -hmm. deadly. That, that's why I don't like chess anymore. So yeah, I know. That's why I'm into, you know, so, you know. You have said that before, yeah. that uh, there's a, there's a, the possibilities are limited. Yeah, but getting back to like the talent, I think mm -hmm. Morphe and, and Capablanc, uh, Mm -hmm. Enormous talent. You know, they're two of my favorites. Steinitz was very great too. Yeah. I, I Alekin was great, but I'm not a big fan of his. Uh, maybe it's just my taste. I, I just, you know, it's not my uh, taste. It's not my. I He's considered one of the greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I've studied his games a lot. Mm -hmm. But I much prefer uh, Capablanca yeah. and Morphe. Mm -hmm. Is that because of some? Uh, some uh, imagination or uh, what you yeah, call... Yeah, I think uh, Alec uh, had a rather heavy style. I think um, uh, Capablanco was much more brilliant and talented. He had a mm -hmm. you know, real light touch. Everybody I've ever spoken to who, who, who saw Capablanco play, mm -hmm. they still you know, speak of him with awe. You could show him any position. They say instantly he would tell you the right move. Yeah, which I'm sure is an exaggeration because they're, they're quite weak. They wouldn't even know what the right move is if they saw it. But still, uh, well, so many people say that there has to be something to it, you know. Mm -hmm. And you met a lot of people that uh, knew him. I met, yeah. Met I used to, yeah. When I used to go to the Manhattan Chess Club back in the 50s, uh, I met a lot of old timers there, mm -hmm. real Blankets, because he used to come around to the Manhattan mm -hmm. Club. I think there in the 40s. In the forties, before he yeah. died, yeah, yeah, he died in the early forties, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you met, and him. they just spoke about Capablanca with mm -hmm. awe. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. And I've never gonna, and it's impressed me because it wasn't just one person, and I've never seen people speak about any chess player like that before or since. You know. Well, they speak about you in that way, and, well, that's and not they that. do that in New York. You know, the chess players that play out in Boston Square, for example. Oh, but Capablanca really was—he well, was fantastic. Mm -hmm. He was. Uh, yeah, he's he's the greatest. Well. Again, uh, but if he, even even he, if you study him objectively, he had his uh, weaknesses. Uh, mm -hmm. he would, if, especially when you would play over his games from with his notes, he would make idiotic statements like, uh, "I the, the rest, I, I played the rest of the game perfectly." Or like my the I play and the rest of the game couldn't be improved upon. But then you play through it, and it's not true at all. Mm -hmm. But the thing that was so great about Capablanca, not only was he a fantastic player, but he really spoke his mind. Mm -hmm. And he said what he believed was yeah. the truth. Yeah. You know? He didn't keep it for himself. No, no. Mm -hmm. He really said what he felt, mm -hmm. which was wonderful, you know? Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, you know, he wanted to change the rules already back in, I think, the 20s. Yeah. He said it was chess was getting played out, and he was right. Mm -hmm. It's even more so now. Oh, now it's, the, now it's completely dead. It's a joke. 
Mm -hmm. It's all just memorization and prearrangement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a terrible game now. And the computers uh, yeah, can do it. Uh, it's a very is, uncreative game now. And everything is known and there is nothing yeah. new. Well, mm -hmm. I know, let's not exaggerate, mm -hmm. but it, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's, it's really dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how are you spending your time in Iceland? Is it okay? Yeah, very good, yeah. yeah. You've got some new friends since you came here? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm having a really nice time. It's a very, you know, kind of quiet, low-key life here. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to the shop and uh, you go to the bookstore. And yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have some nice chats. Yeah. How about the people, like everyday people you meet just on your way, are they... Are they okay? They're all friendly, yeah. yeah. I haven't had anybody, you know, tell me uh, I'm unhappy that you're here or something. Nobody does? No, no. Mm -hmm. But you haven't been traveling. You... No, I, I have You mean in, in Iceland? Iceland? I traveled around a little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. in Iceland, yeah. yeah. But, but I haven't left friend. Iceland since I came, yeah. Why is that you haven't left Iceland? Is it, uh, are you, do you think you could still be there, could be on your, uh, on your track, let's say? It is possibly, yeah. Oh, it's possible, uh, you know. There was a very uh, unpleasant experience there, you know, uh, to be kidnapped and to be uh, mm -hmm. treated like that, you know. Yeah. It's an experience you'll never forget. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I'll never forget it, because they may try and do it again. <laughs> but if you see the movie The Road to Guantanamo, mm -hmm. Uh, there's there, there's a see, there's some scenes when they're when some of the prisoners are giving problems for the guards mm -hmm. and then they call like some kind of uh, you know stormtrooper types they're heavily armed you know yeah. mm -hmm. and body armed with mm -hmm. uh, with the helmet mm -hmm. and all of this about five of them come in, with combat, in combat combat right that's yeah. it. they come back into the cell and then mm -hmm. you know beat them up and take them away and they did the same thing to me. They Several did? times, yes. I was taken to isolation uh, twice, and also when I was kidnapped in the Narita airport, it was mm -hmm. the same. A whole bunch of guys jumped me. But twice, when I was in the Ushiku uh, detention center, mm -hmm. these people came with helmets and body armor. Yeah? They did? Same thing. Yeah, that's how they do it there, too. If any prisoner's giving trouble... See, normally the guards are just... Uh, you know, they don't have any weapon with them, they're just dressed normally. But when they have some problem, about five or six of them will come in body armor. Yeah, compact. Helmets, yeah, Outfit with heavy or... boots, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're in very good physical condition, I can tell mm -hmm. you. I think they're exercising every day, you know? Mm -hmm. So you don't take the chances to travel abroad? Well, no, I, I don't know. I will... Uh, I will travel abroad, yeah. I yeah, you will. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just waiting until the right moment. You know. For the right opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've been all over Iceland mm -hmm. with your Icelandic friends. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And seen some interesting places, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I say something about this North Korea uh, situation? Yes. yes. I think I'm very disappointed with uh, China and mm -hmm. Russia, especially though with China. I just don't understand how they can uh, stab North Korea in the back like this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know whether this is all some kind of an elaborate game China is playing, or they're really serious about bringing down uh, the North Korean regime. It looks like they're really serious about bringing down the regime. I think this is a disgrace. I mean, don't they know after the United States uh, takes care of North Korea and Iran and Iraq mm -hmm. and Pakistan, then they're going to go after the big countries. They're going to go after India and China and Russia. Mm -hmm. So you think uh, it's on, uh, the Americans are just doing this to uh, be able to conquer the world? Yeah, definitely, the Jews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think this is, I, I, I think, I can't understand why they're doing this. They, maybe they're bribed, or maybe these leaders in China have tons of money in U.S. banks, or I, I really don't know what, it, or maybe they're CIA agents. Why would they turn against uh, the dear leader in North Korea is beyond me. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Professor, it's been a pleasure yeah. speaking to you. And this uh, interview is coming to an end. We are going to here in the with Bobby Fischer. We were going to talk about how stor the world is in 
svissnesks banka UBS að loka reikningum hans fyrir var löst og án skýringa en Bobby hefur komið víða við sagt og bæði frá skák og, og ímsu öðru talaði um bandariska auðrykkstefnu fangelsi í Guantanamo og fangabúðunar og margt margt fleira en þessu er lokið Bobby Fischer, thank you so very much for being here with you, with us